Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at wrapper classes in Java, just a quick introduction to them. Uh, if you've been doing any coding in Java, you know that you have what I call the little variables, the primitives like integer, double, boolean, float, byte, there's a few others, right, you may be using. These are all the primitive types, which basically means when you make this variable, like let's say you go a equals 5, that a is a variable that points in memory to the value 5 directly. As opposed to when you do something like this, like you make an object, let's say I make an object called student uh, Bob is a new student, just pretend that actually will work here, then what you're doing is you're making a reference variable which keeps the memory address that gets you to this object that's been created in memory, which is a student. Now, some things in Java, uh, some structures require that you use objects and reference variables and you don't use primitives like little int and little double. And one easy example that you've done in the course is the list interface. So one thing would be ArrayList. ArrayList, you give it a type of objects, right? So here I'm saying big integer, which we'll explain in a minute. But the ArrayList can't store little ints and it can't store little doubles. And so what has to happen is they've made a class called a wrapper class and the wrapper class for little integers is integer with a capital I and all it is is it's just a class and inside of it it has a variable which is a little integer stores a value for you so basically what they've done is they've basically taken the idea of the primitive type and made a class out of it now along with this class I'll just show you some of the docs for it here is there's two ways you can make your integer object and one way is just you make a new integer and give it a value or you can make new integer and give it a string so you could have a number inside of quotes either way will work uh, the nice thing about storing a value with the big integer class I just call it big integer here because of the I is you actually get a whole bunch of methods that let you do stuff to the integer that may be useful in your program okay now we're not going to cover any of these here except for one which is the main method which is int value and int value actually just tells you the value of the integer object but it sends back your little integer okay so int value is how you get the value out you're gonna notice there's actually no set command here to set the value once you've made this integer that's its value you can't change it if you want a different value you just have to remake the big integer I'll show you that in a second so let's just sort of walk through this here you'll see here I'm making an integer object okay integer num is a new integer 99 so it now stores the number 99. If I made an array list of big integer, I can now add num in there. You can also add it this way. You could just say, hey, nums, add, and you don't actually have to give your integer a name. If you just want it in the list, just add a new integer 55. Now you've got the integer object storing 55 into your list. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, or maybe you're saying to yourself, but I've made an array list and I've added integers, little integers in there before and it was fine. Well, here's the thing. Up until a few years ago, you actually couldn't add the little integers in there like this. Uh, what they added to Java a few years ago was something called auto boxing. So when you actually do a line like this and you're using a data structure that requires integer objects, right? That doesn't allow the booleans, or sorry, the primitive types. What happens is this 88 goes in and the compiler is actually doing this automatically for you. So when it finds the 88, which is just a little int, right, a primitive type, it's actually creating a new integer object for you. So it's almost as if the line in there that's taking place automatically is new integer 88. Okay, is actually being done for you automatically. That's called auto boxing. Now, since it's been done for you, that's probably why you've added little ints in there before and it's worked okay. You can even do this. Integer, right? The little int, 77, can be added in. And this is successful because, again, this will be auto-boxed into a integer object. Okay, automatically for you. Even doing this works. Integer object temp, 
It's just currently null, right? I didn't set it equal to anything new. Temp equals x. You can set it equal to a little int, and it's automatically boxed into an integer object for you. Okay, so it's like we're showing you this topic, but it probably won't change a lot of what you do, but you're supposed to be aware that this is happening behind the scenes. Um, just a few other examples with the wrapper classes. Here's my num that I made just up here, storing the 99. If you want to know what value is tucked in there, you can use the int value method of the wrapper class. And so that gets the value 99 out. Notice you don't even have to use int value if you don't want to. If you try doing some math, 5 plus num, it'll actually take the little int value out of there automatically. This isn't called auto boxing, this is unboxing. So it's basically taking it out of the, uh, the little container that's been made. And so this works too, and it'll print out, you know, the appropriate value. Or sorry, there's the appropriate value there, the 104. Uh, just to reinforce this idea that this automatically gets converted, I go into my array list, I grab out slot 0. It's an integer object that's coming out. It's some value. And then I can take some value, use int value, you know, get its little integer value, or automatically unbox it. Hey, value, which was a little int, right, the primitive type, grab the value out of there. Uh, what happens when you want to change the value of one of your integer objects that you already have? Uh, when you scan that class, there's no method called set to new value or set value. You basically just do this. If you're tired of num being equal to 99, you can just say num equals new integer 13. Now it's set to a new integer object in memory that stores the value 13. Or, even faster, hey num, set yourself equal to 456. It's automatically boxed into a new integer object. So, in one way, it's not going to change a lot of what you do, but hopefully now you have a little bit of an idea that when you are using any data structures that involve objects, like your lists, that that is taking place. They're actually being stored as an object. You're not breaking the rules of list, store, reference uh, variables that point to objects in memory. Uh, that's basically it. Um, be aware, for double, there's big D double. Uh, for Boolean, there's capital B. For byte, there's byte. For long, there's long. Basically, you get the idea. They're all capital letters, and you can hunt them down on the, uh, the Java Oracle site, sort of just read them. But they all work the exact same way. Okay, They have one or two constructors and a bunch of methods you can use, and they will always have the int value, double value, long value method to get the value out. And that's basically it. Uh, a little introduction to it. Thanks for watching.